our Physics 101 project on light. We are going to discuss different properties about light and how light travels, whether it's in a straight line or whether it bends, whether it's a wave property or whether it's a particle. There are many interesting mysteries about light that we do not always understand, such as color refraction and subtraction. Light can enable us to see, and some interesting examples of how light works on our environment are Fact, polar bears are not white. Now the polar bear is the largest carnivore that lives on land, and it's twice as big as the Siberian tiger. But if you photograph a polar bear with an ultraviolet light sensitive camera, that big bear is going to appear black because it's clear and only appears white in the sun. Now, you might not believe this, but the thinner hairs of the undercoat are not hollow, and they're colorless. It only looks white because the air spaces in each hair scatter light of all colors. Here's a quiz question. Can you guess which British progressive rock group used this as their album cover in March 1973? A. Pink Fairies B. Pink Cadillac C. The Legendary Pink Dots Or D. Pink Floyd that's right, it's Pink Floyd. The Dark Side of the Moon is often considered to be their magnum opus, and music critics say that it's one of the most greatest and influential albums of all time. More importantly, that prism on that album cover proves that light can be refracted, dispersed is into different polarizations, and travels in a straight line. Pretty neat. Finally, What's the name of the test that tests color discerning abilities and detects color blindness? A. Proteinopia test. B. The Isahara test. C. The Knots and Dots test. Possibly. Or D. The Dr. Shinobu test. Now the correct answer is answer B, which is the Isahara color test. Named after its designer Dr. Shinobu Isahara, a professor at the University of Tokyo, the Izahara color test was actually first published in 1917. Color blindness occurs in people who have a deficiency in receptor cones, detecting different wavelengths in color. For example, someone might not be able to see red or green, or in some cases, blue, or no color at all. Now, we're going to go back to see my topin, and she's going to take us to the lab for our first experiment. Okay, we're going into the lab now to do our experiment. See you in there. For our first experiment, we use the following equipment. One mirror or reflective surface, one LED light source, props to hold up the equipment, two cars act as screens, and we will prove that light does travel in straight lines. For our first experiment, we are going to use a hypothesis that light travels in a straight line. We are going to be using a meter stick, a lens, a piece of cardboard, and an LED laser beam. So we are going to see if light travels in a straight line. To do this, we are using the laser beam, and it's not on yet, but it's going to be reflected off the glass mirror and then hit the cardboard. And if it does travel in a straight line, even though it's being reflected off the glass mirror, it should still hit the cardboard. Now we're going to switch it on. And as we see, it does hit the cardboard, and it does travel in a straight line. This proves that light does travel in a straight line. Now we're going to do the double slit experiment. We have two slits in our little mirror that's 0.5 millimeters apart. And that's, we have a laser beam that's going to be shown through the slits to the card, which is one meter away. And we're going to see what happens to light as it travels through your two slits. Okay, we're going to turn on the LED light right now. So the LED light is going to go through the slits right over here. And that's um, 0.5 millimeters apart. And then the LED light should show on the screen as um, interference fringes because of the waves. So I'm going to turn on the LED light right now. Ooh, look at those bars. Yeah, there. <laughs> I think those are bars. It's not distinct either. They're moving intermittently. Wow. Let's take a closer look. That's quite amazing. What do you think happened here? 
I'm not sure. I think it's because of the waves going through the slits. And the interference shows up as interference fringes on the screen. Wow, that's interesting. According to double slit interference by Young, light actually moves in both waves and particles. So in this screen, we actually see the light being shown as particles since light is made of electrons. And the reason being is that the we vary the width of the slit that the light is being shown through. So if you just give it a few seconds, I will change the light to be shown in a different way to show the other properties. So back to the screen, we see here now that we've gone to the original slit. We can see that light does travel in waves and this is uh, the best way to see the interference fringes. And these gaps that occur in the screen are actually the fringes from the waves, light waves interfering. And this property of light is called diffraction. What's occurring here in this experiment is called diffraction. Um, I just want to explain what happened in the diffraction of the interference fringes that we just saw in our second experiment. And so the explanation for what happened is actually called diffraction. And this experiment is called Young's double slit interference. And this only happens un under very specific circumstances and conditions. These being that the distance between the screen and the light source has to be about one meter apart. And for the light source, the light has to go through two slits that are less than or equal to 0 0.5 millimeters. And that is what we precluded in our experiment. So what happens in this? Um, set up is that the light goes through the two slits of the photographic um, aid that we use and then these waves that go through the slits or let through these slits bend around the obstacle and therefore the diffraction of the waves actually shows on the screen through interference fringes and what happens in this situation is that we will observe that the fringes are about less than one millimeter apart and these are called interference fringes and a specific formula that explains this is lambda over a equals to x over d big d and sine theta is equals to lambda over a or equals to one over one thousand and since x and big D are related by tangent theta, it's also equals to x over big D. And therefore, this is how we arrived at this formula. And these angles are actually indicative of how the light source travels towards the screen. And thus, this is our experiment. And uh, that's the explanation for this it. This was all for our video lab experiment. I hope you found it informative and exciting. Bye!